Hey everyone, Jagtagger93 here to talk about something that's a bit of a bit of a topic among the Doom community lately, ever since John Romero's divisive Sigil Megawad came out. Now some fans of this Balls Difficult Wad are defending it, saying it's true to the intent of Doom and being a survival horror game. Now that idea of Doom being equated as a survival horror game, that has caused a lot of people to um well, uh, respond with uh, like what what the hell? No, Doom is not a survival horror game. Uh, even myself, I kind of scoffed at the idea of Doom being a survival horror game. I mean, I guess you could consider it a survival horror experience for the demons. I mean, Doom is undeniably an action-based game. I mean, heck, before Doom was Doom, it was actually going to be an Aliens game, Alien, the, or Aliens, the sequel to Alien. Now, Aliens is a much more of an action-based movie, whereas Alien is the survival horror movie. But Doom very much carries over that idea of having horror elements, but being, at the end of the day, all about action. If Doom was originally going to be an alien-type game, maybe it'd be a different story, but no. Uh, in Doom, you have survival horror elements, but you're encouraged to kill every single demon you see, and you're often given more than enough ammunition to get the job done in each and every single map. But... You know, the thing is, the more I think about it, the more I can kind of see how Doom, you know, OG Doom, can be considered survival horror in some ways. I'm not saying I agree. I'm kind of making this video, actually, to really just kind of talk through my thoughts, because sometimes that helps me, you know, think. I mean, originally I was like, no, no way in hell is Doom a survival horror game, but then the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, wait, I can think of some ways it is, so hopefully by the end of the video I'll come away with a much clearer picture just by talking out, getting my thoughts out there, so... First of all, I have to wonder how much of my and others' impressions of Doom are kind of tainted by years and years of experience and familiarity with it. A key part of horror is often the unknown, but in 2019, imps, pinkies, lost souls, and everything else really just doesn't surprise us anymore. Uh, we have their movements and attack patterns down to re you know, reflexes at this point, and it's part of the reason why I absolutely avoid inv invisibility spears whenever I can because they tend to cause the demons to attack in more erratic, unpredictable patterns. But when I see a Baron of Hell, for example, I can practically feel when it's going to attack, just out of instinct. And I know that's pretty much true to everyone who plays Doom and Doom 2 today. But the thing is, as much as I play Doom for nostalgia, this is not at all how Doom felt to play when it was brand new to me as a kid. As a kid, I had no idea how much damage a demon takes before keeling over, or Heck, even if any of them were killable. Uh, I mean, to compare it to Wolfenstein 3D for a moment, where almost all the enemies in that game are Nazi soldiers with guns, Doom kept surprising me with varied monsters with unique attacks. I mean, while playing Wolfenstein 3D, there was no question what I was seeing and what I, it would do. I mean, a soldier with a gun, of course he's going to shoot at me, and of course he can be killed easily with a few bullets. However, when I was brand new to Doom, and upon seeing, say, a pinky for the first time, it felt like gunfire was just tickling it, and I had no idea what it would do. It looked completely alien to me. Uh, so I'd just fire and ask questions later, which is pretty much the tactic you're supposed to use when encountered with anything new in uh, Doom. Uh, keep firing and praying until it dies. Also, when I was new to the game, I had this f nagging feeling of hopelessness, even dread, or hell, doom, as I wandered the derelict labs of Phobos. I mean, it's gonna sound really, really weird, and maybe I'm completely alone in this sentiment, but I don't know, I just remember walking around those labs in episode one and hearing the doors I would open close in the background. And I knew that the doors were just closing, but when I was brand new to the game, I didn't know that at the time. So I thought there was something else moving into the facility following me, like I was being watched or stalked. And also to the um, poster for Doom, which I had hanging in my room at the time, had two Doom Marines on it, or two Doom guys. And I always wondered, like, you know, is there, are there other Marines still fighting in the base that I have to get to or not? Or am I completely alone? You know, and uh, it was very interesting. You know, I'd often come across corpses of fallen comrades and wonder weird things like, was there a recent firefight that I just missed out on? You know, what if I had been a little quicker with this game? Might I have been able to help a comrade? Then I wouldn't be so alone. And with a squad of Marines, my chance of getting out alive would be a bit better. But no, at the very start, it's just you, a disgraced space marine who was put on guard duty with a measly pistol against the hordes of hell. The UAC doesn't give a rat's ass about you. 
Um, the you know colonial marines don't care about you either. You're a disgraced marine. So uh, the goal at the start is to somehow get out of the situation alive, but your chances are pretty grim. And indeed, you're absolutely doomed. I mean, you're fighting against supernatural forces of Satan, right? As the game progresses, you're never really put in a situation that's impossible. With, with a little asterisk, we'll get to that in a bit. But I do remember wondering when I was new to the game, well, what's stopping the devil or Beelzebub or whatever from cheating? I mean, surely there's billions, if not an infinite number of Hellspawn out there. And at the end of the day, I can only carry so much ammunition, know what I mean? So, E1M8, Phobos Anomaly, one of my favorite maps. And it's a cruel kick in the gut to the player, as it ends with a completely unfair fight where Doom Guy gets annihilated. And episode one ends with a question mark. Did Doom Guy just die at the completion of the quest? Uh, I just said quest in my episode. But I honestly always thought that's, you know, what happens. I actually always thought that, uh, you know, your guy, whoever it is, be it Flint Taggart, Buddy DeCote, Blaskowitz, or whoever, actually does die at episode one. And when episode two starts in hell, that's why, because, well, yeah, you were doomed from the start, and this is what happens. Uh, and then you know how the uh, story progresses from there, but still, pretty dark, pretty grim, and yeah, it, it doesn't get much more darker than that. And I guess in a kind of a sense, the elements are all there for a survival horror game, right? So I could totally understand, especially in episode one and Doom one, why someone will think it's a survival horror game. But uh, the more I think about it, you really can't say it purely is. I mean, with all the mood and the atmosphere in the world, Doom at its core is still kill or be killed. And again, Doom plays, and I've said it a million times, and I'll continue saying it a million times, Doom plays very unique to other first-person shooters, especially ones, you know, post, in the, you know, after Quake. Um, it plays like a 2D first-person shooter. I've said this again a billion times, so if you are a repeat, fan of my channel, I apologize, but, you know, I, I gotta say it here, Doom, you know, imagine a bullet hell, a top-down bullet hell, like, like a Raiden uh, game or something like that, and imagine that, but in first-person perspective, but still keep the, the uh, 2D, and that's what Doom is. At its best, you have projectiles coming at you, and you have to prioritize targets, and all that takes time and familiarity, so Doom gets more fun to play the more you learn it, but the more you learn it, the less scary it becomes. So it's kind of counterintuitive in some ways, I suppose, to say it's a survival horror game. But be that as it may, I really, really enjoy wads that try to live on an experience where the player feels much more vulnerable than before. And I love wads that produce um, new strategies or new, new experiences with old uh, enemy types. I'm, the uh, wad is, is the name of the wad is lost to me, but there was one wad where. Um, I'm pretty sure I reviewed it. I can't remember the name of it though, but it was it was interesting because each map had its own unique um, encounter with different enemies. And I remember one map I thought was impossible it was you against a uh, arch file, and you just had a chainsaw. And in all my years playing Doom, I've never ever thought, "Hey, a chainsaw! There's an arch file. Let's do this." Hell no, no, because. You know that if the Archvile sees you, it can get a hit on you, and if it gets a hit on you with its flames, it, that's a huge chunk of health, and if you're right up to it with the chainsaw, yeah, it, it's looking right at you. But what I didn't realize at the time was, um, the Archvile does have a pain tolerance. It's, it's weird, it's a mechanic thing in Doom, but each each enemy has a pain tolerance, and the Archvile's pain tolerance is very high, but if you can cause its pain tolerance to trigger after getting so much damage, it, it'll interrupt its um, attack animation. And that's what happens with the chainsaw if you're kind of lucky too. But yeah, no, I never knew that, and I never would have thought to. Uh, I would have thought taking down Archer with a chainsaw was practically impossible, but turns out no, it's very possible. And uh, you know, I don't know if John Romero's Sigil Megawatt successfully does this in making the player feel vulnerable again in a uh, way that feels fair and balanced, but at the same time feels unfair too. As weird as that sounds, maybe it doesn't sound. Maybe that sounds odd, but what I mean is a way that. Um, Kind of like what I said earlier with the arch file, presenting a situation to you that seems absolutely dire, like, I don't know, being on some base on some moon around some planet, completely by yourself, armed with a pistol against the hordes of hell, you know, that. But still, at the end of the day, it's somehow being possible for you to come out alive. Even though you, you didn't, actually, you got episode two dead. But you know what I mean, right? I mean, I, I don't know, but John Romero's Sigil Megawatt, I look forward to playing it. 
um, I get some Dai Katana vibes from it, and don't, don't, please don't take that the wrong way, okay? Because I actually do enjoy Dai Katana. And what I mean by that is Dai Katana is seen as a very, very challenging game. But when John Romero made it, he made it with the idea that it's meant to be challenging, and it's challenging for him. And I guess that's one of John Romero's, um, I don't want to say weaknesses, but one of his uh, tropes is when he makes a game, especially a first-person shooter, and again, he's very good at Doom. I mean, hell, he made it, but he, again, he's good at it too, right? So, but when, when he makes a game, he makes it in a way that is fair and balanced and challenging for him and not for your casual uh, person. Now, this should work because most of the people playing Sigil are not your people playing Fortnite. They're people that have been playing Doom mods for years and years and years. What I'm concerned of is does it hold up against other megawads from, you know, especially these days that are coming out that are just absolutely amazing. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I look forward to playing it. I honestly have not had the time to sit down with it yet. Memorial Day weekend just happened and yeah, things have been crazy. Uh, I've been managing to get out the occasional quick uh, map review though, because those are pretty quick to do and I won't say easy, but a little more accessible than downloading entire megawad. And when I download a megawad, I like playing the whole thing before I give my idea. And, Anyway, that takes time, but uh, it's it's coming, I promise. Uh, but for now, all I'll say that Doom isn't really a survival horror game, but man, it's kind of awesome and easy to imagine it as one, right? Yeah, and that's really all I gotta say about it. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is Jagtagger93 signing out. Y'all have a good one.